Hello and welcome to a video summarising all you need to know about the novel The Kite Runner by Khaled Hosseini. This video will examine everything that you need to know when it comes to understanding the context of this book, the summary, the key characters, the themes, as well as important symbols. This video is really useful if you're studying this novel either for your courseworks or as part of your upcoming exams. Now, when it comes to understanding the context, the first is to understand the author himself, Khaled Hosseini. He was born in Kabul, Afghanistan in 1965 to an upper middle class family. It's important to remember that at this time, Kabul was a major city and it had a mix of Western and Afghan culture. It was a very westernized, very liberal city. However, they moved to Iran when he was a child, when the Afghanistan war broke out in the 70s. And then they moved on to Paris, then San Jose in the USA, where Khaled went to school and then later on became a doctor. Afghanistan is another important country to know about in the Middle East, because this is where the novel is set. And a substantial amount of the novel is set here, as well as obviously USA. So firstly, it's important to understand that Afghanistan in the 1960s was a flourishing time. Many attended university. There was a new constitution that was created to in order to institute a democratic legislature, which in other words means people had free voting. Um, they could vote without any fear of government attacks and during the 1960s when this novel begins times in Afghanistan were very peaceful and this was a very prosperous country however in 1973 there was a coup against the king a coup in other words means an uprising people decide to march against the king and they try and overthrow him and in 1979 there were the Soviet Afghan war which began so this is a war which internally hit Afghanistan substantially but also the Soviets which is uh, the leadership from Russia at the time tried to intervene in order to protect the monarchy so there were a lot of insurgent groups so basically rebel groups who were backed by the US the most notable of it being the Mujahideen which later on in the late 90s became Al-Qaeda and this group was backed by the USA, Saudi Arabia and Pakistan at this time, whilst the Communist Party, so the government, was backed by the Soviet Union and the monarchy, of course, was backed also by the Soviet Union. However, the king and the uh, the government lost and the Soviet troops pulled out in 1979 and the country was left to a civil war and it was eventually controlled by extremist groups, most notably the Taliban. So this therefore led to a reversal in what was in the 1960s a really westernized country. So um, there were no more free elections. Women, for instance, who were able to attend university, who were able to dress how they wished, became very restricted. And also the state of Afghanistan became, became very Islamic. Now, when it comes to the summary of the novel itself... The novel begins with Amir, the main character who looks back on his childhood in Afghanistan. He lived with his father, Baba, and the two servants. Ali and his son, uh, Hassan, and um, they were the two servants that worked for Amir and his father. father. His father's cl close friend, Rahim Khan, visits them often. The novel then develops and we learn that Afghanistan's king is overthrown and Amir and her son are playing one day when they run into three three boys who threaten to beat up Amir for playing with an ethnic minority like Hassan. Hassan then uses his slingshot to scare the boys off. Then winter descends and everyone is at a kite flying tournament. When a kite falls, the boys chase after it to retrieve it, which they call kite running. And hence, this is where the novel is taken its name from. Amir, during this time, wins a tournament and Hassan runs after the other kite. Amir goes after him and finds him being held down in an alley by three bully boys who are raping him. Amir, on witnessing this, runs away. He doesn't step in to help his friend Hassan. And when Hassan returns, Amir pretends like he doesn't know what happened. The two boys then begin to drift apart. Amir feels really guilty about what he did and what happened to Hassan. However, he wants Hassan to leave. He hides money under Hassan's pillow and tells his father that Hassan stole it. And his father confronts Hassan, who admits to doing it, although we know he didn't. 
Ali and Hassan, so the two people who work for their father, are then sent away. The story then skips forward to many years later to Amir and his father who then escape Kabul as the Soviet troops invade and Afghanistan is in the full throes of war. They escape first to Pakistan before moving on to California. Once they reach the US, Baba works at a gas station and Amir goes to school and they work on a flea market on weekends to really make ends meet so life in the US is far less blissful than the life that he left behind in Afghanistan. One day, they run into an old friend at the market, General Tahiri, and Amir notices his daughter, Soraya, and he tries to speak to her. Then Baba is diagnosed with lung cancer, and Amir proposes to Soraya, and they hold the wedding quickly so that Baba can attend, and later on, a month later, Baba dies. Amir then hears from Rahim Khan, who wants him to visit him in Pakistan. He goes and Rahim tells him that Afghanistan has gotten much, much worse. He also followed Hassan after he was kicked from their home. Hassan ended up married with a son in Kabul. And years later, he hears that the Taliban killed Hassan and his wife and put their son in an orphanage. He asks Amir to go to Kabul and find the son, Surab, and bring him to Pakistan so that Rahim can at least look after Surab. He also tells Amir that Baba was Hassan's father, his brother, and he goes to the orphanage but is told that they have moved the boy. So Amir, who now realises that Hassan was his half-brother, feels a real responsibility towards Hassan's child who's now in the orphanage. He then goes to a soccer game the next day where a Taliban official was supposed to be and there he witnesses a stoning at half-time and realises just how bad Kabul has gotten. He meets the official and tells him that he's looking for Sarab and they bring him in. And it looks as though Sarab, much like his father, had been sexually abused. Amir realises the official is one of the bullying school's boys from childhood. They, the officials attack them and Sarab shoots them with his slingshot so that he and Amir can escape. Amir then asks him to come and live with his wife and him in the US and Sarab agrees. They face difficulty getting Sarab to the US as he has no papers. Sarab tries to kill himself. He lives but then refuses to ever speak again. They manage to move to California and one day they go flying kites. When they win and Amir runs off to fetch the losing kite for Sarab. The key characters are really important when understanding the novel. And the first is Amir, who's the narrator and the protagonist. He came from a wealthy background in Afghanistan and he feels his father does not like him and becomes jealous when his father often lavishes attention on others like Hassan. Hassan is the other key character, so unlike Amir, he doesn't change at all throughout the story. He's always loyal, forgiving and well-behaved. He's not envious, though Amir has much more than him and he symbolises innocence in the story. Baba is another important character, so Amir sees Baba as a distant but good man and he tried to set an example of good morals for Amir. Amir doesn't see his father's conflict in nature though, he feels guilty for never acknowledging his son as his son. He stays distant so that he is not giving one son more attention than the other. And when they move to America, Baba has real difficulty adjusting to life as a poorer man, but his relationship with Amir improves. Now, when it comes to the themes, the first is the past. This is an important theme because we learn that the characters in the story really cannot escape their past. They're really shaped by it. So Rab's past was very traumatizing and this causing it, causes him to flinch and often be withdrawn. When he thinks he might be sent back to the orphanage, he tries to kill himself. But we also learn that Amir is haunted by his past and his guilt from it drives almost all of his actions. He even feels responsible for Hassan's death since Hassan was kicked out of his home because of Amir. Political events are also another important theme. So in this story, political events in the country directly affect characters in their lives. Amir and Baba are forced to flee their home because of political events and Hassan is killed because of the Taliban. Amir in a way becomes symbolic of Afghanistan. He's been put through difficult times but in the end redeems himself and perhaps Afghanistan will also redeem itself one day. Redemption is another important theme so Amir constantly feels like he has to redeem himself. He wants to impress his father because he thinks Baba is angry that his wife died during childbirth. His his guilt about Hassan drives him to search for his son in hopes of redeeming himself. 
In terms of symbol, the first is Hassan's cleft lip. So this lip signifies his poverty and his class. And Baba pays for it to be fixed because now we learn that he is secretly his father. Amir gets his lips split in a fight and is then scarred. And his identity shifts because of this, bonding him with Hassan. He learns to stand up for himself and eventually redeems himself. Kite's another important theme. So they were a happy thing for Amir growing up. He loves flying them and they remind him of, of Baba, who's a great kite flyer. After Hassan's rape, the kite becomes a symbol of this betrayal of Hassan. He never flies a kite again until he brings Hassan's ho son home with him. The kite then evolves into a symbol of a father-son connection that him and Baba once had and that now him and Hassan's son have. So that's all. If you found this video useful, do subscribe and give us a thumbs up. But also, if you are seeking model answers on this uh, book, as well as revision sheets, visit www.firstratetutors, which features all of this material that you will find really useful if you're sitting this book as part of your exams or your coursework. Thank you for listening.